Welcome to episode five of Take the Trip With Us, where you hear from travel professionals who've experienced destinations firsthand. Listen to their stories and experiences, along with recommendations for your own vacation. So today I have with me Rochelle Greeson, and we are going to hear about her recent trip to the beach to Jekyll Island, which I know nothing about. So I know you went just a few weeks ago, um, so in September. Um, so where is it and who was with you? Okay, so yeah, we went to Jekyll Island. It was my family, so my husband, myself, and my three girls. Um, and they are nine, five, and four. So Aww. it was a, yeah, we had a great time. So it was a first time experience for all of us to go to Jekyll Island. Aside from when I was probably like nine or 10, I went in school. So it was really fun and really neat to go see this new, this new beach as a family and experience it. Um, Jekyll Island is a island off the coast of Georgia, which is where we live. Okay. And for us, it's only about a four hour drive. So it wasn't very far for us at all. And it's located just south of Savannah and north of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, and it's a barrier island, so it's really cool. It's not your typical Floridian island that you would find with it being that barrier island, um, but did it is you, on the Atlantic side. So did you get there? Is it a bridge or you have to take a ferry? Um, no, we did take a, go over a bridge. Yes, okay. so there is now okay. a causeway um, that they do have, and it's fairly new. It's a paved causeway to get you there. Um, and a fun, interesting, cool fact is this is actually a state park which we didn't realize that until we got there and we had to pay a park entrance fee to get on the island. So oh, the state wow. of Georgia actually owns and maintains this island. So it was really cool to see that. That's, that is neat. So there, so you can drive your car over there. You can drive around. It's yeah. okay. Yes, absolutely. So you would have to pay a day pass if you come on and off the island. So each day you'd have to pay to come back on. But we stayed on the island and did not leave the entire time. So there's plenty for us to do for the, the extended weekend we were there. So we just had to pay the one-time fee. And okay. it, I believe it was like $7 to get on. So not bad at all. And we drove around the island to go do different activities. Oh, so now where did you stay? We stayed at the Hampton Inn that was located on the southern point of the island. Um, and it was a very nice hotel that they have there on the island. And it is considered beachfront. Um, which was nice. So to get to the beach from our hotel room, we did have to go over a um, boardwalk bridge. And it was a, a short little walk, not long at all. Go up several steps, walk across a bridge, go down several steps and you're on the beach. Okay, One so the, the, hotel, the hotel's right there on the beach. So like in the hotel, you can see, I mean, it's like ocean view, you can see the ocean, it's right there or there's something in between Other there is something in between so that is one of the differences because it is a barrier island it's like you're in the middle of the woods and then oh. ocean so there's beach woods and then your hotel so there is a good stretch of woods and that's what your boardwalk is walking through are the woods oh, wow so you'll see deer and raccoons and other wildlife right there at your hotel pool and on your patio if you're not careful oh my <laughs> goodness your oceanfront. So yeah, you don't just see your typical oceanfront animals, your birds and turtles and dolphins. You'll also see other land-based animals too because of the type of wildlife that's there. Okay, and the so in the hotel, you don't necessarily look out. I'm just trying to picture like how tall these trees are. Are you looking out and seeing the ocean or you're seeing woods, I guess then? Woods. You see pine trees okay. and oak trees and then um, Spanish moss hanging from all these trees. It's very old Southern um, style with all the Spanish moss hanging off of a lot of the trees. Wow. It's, so it's tell me then about the beach unique. once you get over there. I mean, is it, is it super crowded? I mean, when you were there, what's it like, is, especially right now with COVID-19 happening, did yes. you feel that you could space out? Oh, absolutely. So we were there on a holiday weekend, which I feel like gives you a little bit more of an idea of maybe like a typical time to go. Um, but even on a holiday weekend and the hotel was sold out to their COVID capacity. And I believe it was a little bit more than their typical COVID capacity too, because of the holiday, we were probably one of 20 families on the entire beach. And I'm talking oh. like a mile long stretch in either direction. You could see from ocean to ocean and we were one of 20 families. So wow. 
plenty of room to spread out. We brought our beach umbrella and our beach chairs and we set up camp for the day and the girls played in the ocean. We walked the shoreline looking for seashells and, and enjoyed the ocean. So um, it, okay, so it sounds to me like more of a, I guess not necessarily private beach, but definitely different than like a beach in Miami with like thousands of people absolutely. just on it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely different than a public type of a beach where you could go and the whole community just kind of comes to it. Right. It's more of a secluded private feel, even though it is a hotel. And the good thing about where we were staying is there are no neighbors. So it was a long walk down the beach before the next hotel or resort was before you'd find other guests. Oh, how nice for you guys. That's yeah, awesome. it was great. It was very relaxing. Okay, but you're making me think though, what about like restaurants? I mean, could you eat at the hotel? Was it, did you have to, I guess you had your car so you could go out somewhere to go eat. We could. And then our hotel did not have an open restaurant at it that was open all the time. There was a poolside, I would call it like a bar, but they did serve, you know, sandwiches and burgers and things of that nature. Um, so you could order from there, but they were open limited hours and it was walk up only. And then you could take it back to your room or back to your pool chair type of a situation. Um, you could walk to a restaurant, which was in like a shopping plaza just down, but it was probably about a half a mile. So not a terrible walk, but when we were there, it was hot. So it was sure. too hot for three children to walk down there. So we drove um, and there were plenty of local restaurants to choose from. So anything from breakfast bistros to fine dining restaurants on the oceanfront um, with live bands and music, which was really nice to see. Um, and then we ate at a really neat shrimping restaurant. They locally catch their shrimp there and bring it in and as well as the local fish and they cook it right there at the restaurant. So we ate there at is a place called Zachary's. It was really a cool place to eat at. That's it, awesome. Right at the, the piers where all the, the fishermen come in and you can see all the, the boats and the yachts that are passing through and they park and they come and eat and then they head back out on the ocean. Wow. So Zachary's, you definitely recommend. Absolutely. It was amazing. It's good Southern food, but Southern seafood. So it was delicious. And Southern a food that I might like? Being in the Midwest? <laughs> I think so. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I would say it's not all fried, which is what a lot of people think. A lot of Southern food is it's all fried. There did have some stuff, but yeah, it's hush puppies and um, grits and um, like shrimp and grits, which was amazing. That's what I had. Those are the shrimp and grits. Oh, it was so good. So oh, that's, lots of different variety of foods. That's super. So I know you guys spent a lot of time on the beach, but were there other activities that you did or just something at the hotel or on the beach? I mean, what was your favorite, favorite thing to do? It was a very relaxing trip for us. So the one thing that we definitely did was we walked to the beach line and we just collected seashells with the girls. So it was great to just have them grab their bucket and just find different things that they haven't seen before. When we typically go to the beach, we go to the other side of Florida in the Gulf. So we saw a lot of different seashells and, and things that washed ashore. And because this is more of a marshy land area, the water is totally different. So we did see a horseshoe crab that washed ashore. Um, there were tons of little itty bitty black crabs everywhere all over the place because they thrive in that marshy atmosphere. And that was really neat to see. Um, one of the other activities that the girls just absolutely loved was going to the, um, on the dolphin boat tour. So we went out by the wharf restaurant. So I see one of the little girls <laughs> her head there. Would she like to tell us about collecting seashells? Charlotte? She's run off now. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> so you went I'm on. I'm not going to tell you about her seashell she collected. That's fine. So you said you went on an uh, actual cruise to see dolphins? We did. Yeah, we went on a boat tour. So it was really neat. It was located right there at the Wharf Restaurant, which again is the, the waterfront restaurant with the um, live bands and the music. And when we went out, it's a 90-minute tour, and they take you across the islands. You can see the different barrier islands around give you great historical information about the island, how it came about. And then they kind of just look for dolphins because of course they're wild animals. They're not going to stay put. So we right. just kind of look for different cues. And we we're starting to get bummed. We thought, oh man, we've missed them. We 
there's none around. And then all of a sudden there were pods of dolphins everywhere. We saw so many. And the tour guide said, she's like, no, this isn't like one of the theme parks where they're just going to jump up and do tricks for you. And as soon as she says it, a dolphin jumped up and did a trick out of the water. Oh we're like, oh my gosh. gosh, it was the coolest thing ever. We were all like, ah, oh. like you never see that in, in the open wild. Right, and right. Dolphins were just doing flips and tricks for us. I mean, they were putting on a show. It was amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, I bet the girls just loved that. They were. And of course, now nobody wanted to get off the boat. We wanted to stay there forever. So. <laughs> oh, right, right. Oh, that's that's super. I love doing boat tours because like you said, not only are you seeing what's out there in nature, you may see it or you may not, but hearing, like you said, the history and the stories that they have to tell about the area. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the dolphins is your special memory. Yeah, most sure. definitely. The girls definitely remember that out of everything else that we did. Um, the dolphins and then one of the really unique beaches that we went to that I don't think you could really find anything like this anywhere else at least here in the U.S. is um, Driftwood Beach and it's all these old trees that have died off because of the way that the island is um, eroding and the salt water is getting to these like pine trees and oak trees you know more freshwater trees the salt water is getting into the root system and then they just turn white and they die and they fall over. So you just see like, it's just driftwood, but there are trees that were there and were living and thriving. I feel like I'm getting a, a science lesson. This is it, awesome. <laughs> it's so neat and cool. And for, you know, when I was a kid, I probably would be like, oh, that's really cool to look at. But now as an adult, I appreciate it more from a historical aspect and in the science side of things, but it was really cute. And it's beautiful place to go get pictures taken. So we went at sunset and it was just stunning, stunning with the backdrop of the, the trees and you could just, they're laying down so you can sit on them and they're still sturdy. So they'll yeah. hold your weight, but it just made for such a beautiful, cool backdrop. It almost eerie because it's just dead trees everywhere. Right. Oh, but very cool. That sounds yeah. cool. It's a, that's a very different you know, hearing about your experience at the beach, it sounds very different to me, like you said, than going to say Miami or Daytona or some of the Florida beaches that people think about. So this is an opportunity to go to the beach, but have some different, um, a different experience, different things around you. Now you were, the one last question I was going to ask, you were mentioning the water was different. How is the water different? Because you've got that marshland that's right there in the area and Jekyll Island being a barrier reef, it really protects the true land of Georgia from hurricanes that are coming through. So it's constantly being stirred up. So you've got this dark, murky, stirred up marshland and it's, it could be chest deep, it could be ankle deep depending on tide, which was another neat thing. Tide comes in twice a day. I'm not used to that. I'm used to once a day tide coming in in the middle of the night, early a.m. hours. It was like nine or 10 in the morning. And then again, at like two in the afternoon, the tide came in. It's very strange for me, but the, the waters are currently constantly being mixed up with ocean salt water from the Atlantic and this murky marshland together. So when we went in the ocean, we were a little bit nervous because the water was black and you can't see the bottom. It's not your crystal clear blue like you would see in the Gulf. So it was different, but it's like that year round. It's not because of a storm. It's not, there was something going on ecological or anything. It was just that's how it is all the time. And, and the waves? was The, the waves were, were very manageable, just like your typical waves. Yeah. Okay. So um, one day we were there, there was a storm coming through that night. And so the waves did pick up and were a little higher, um, a little bit stronger. So we kept closer to the shoreline during the day because the storm was coming. But no different than you would find at any other Florida. So if kids want to jump waves and stuff, it's... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, boogie board, the whole thing. Yes, okay, the kids are awesome. having a great time. Oh, it. thank you. Well, I would like to ask Charlotte, who's there, if she had a favorite seashell that she found on the trip. Hello. Did you have fun picking up seashells? Do you have a favorite one? Which one did was your favorite? one with, with that sandy olive. The sand on it, the swirly one. Is swirly, yes. And that's colorful. You, oh, it's colorful. That's so great. And do you remember seeing the animals in the ocean? What were they? A 
dolphins. Wow, that's great. You got to see so many dolphins. Well, thank you for talking to us today. That's great. I'm glad you had a fun time at the beach. So I want to thank Rochelle and her daughter here <laughs> and everyone that listened today. Please tune back in with us as we continue to bring you information about destinations that your family may want to visit. So take the trip with us, hear our stories about new destinations that we're exploring, learn tips and tricks that we found useful, and keep dreaming with us about that next destination, the next vacation, or the next adventure. Until next time, keep dreaming. Bye.